So very often I had my Spanish students come and say to me, Billy, English is such a strange language. You know, sometimes words sound so different individually compared to in a sentence. And sometimes sounds seem to appear or they disappear and we don't know what's going on. And the answer to these questions really lie in the fact that English is a stress-timed language and it's very different to Spanish, which is syllable-timed. And in this video, I'm going to try and explain both of these things to you and hopefully it makes a lot more sense afterwards. Okay, so let's have a look now at syllable-timed languages first, okay? So what makes them special? So first of all, the most important thing to remember is really that in syllable time languages, each syllable lasts more or less the same amount of time. And this is really important because it has a huge impact on the language and its rhythm. Okay, so each syllable lasts more or less the same amount of time. And it really doesn't matter if the syllable is stressed or unstressed. And at the bottom here of the screen, I put these little green boxes now. They're not just there for decoration. They're actually there to illustrate an utterance or a little sentence. And each of the boxes represents one syllable. So in this utterance, we have five different syllables. And at the moment, they're all the same color. But have a look now what happens on our next um, slide here, because I've colored some of those yellow, and that means that those are now stressed syllables. But it really doesn't matter in syllable term languages, because they will all be more or less the same amount of time. Okay, so that the length is more or less the same. It doesn't matter if they're stressed, if they're yellow, or if they're unstressed, if they're green. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Now, um, in general, that really then means that we do not have reduced vowels because we can always keep the same timing more or less, right? And examples for syllable time languages are, for example, Spanish, French, Italian, also Turkish, Mandarin and Cantonese and Korean. These are all examples of syllable term languages and there are of course more but I've just listed these few as examples for you. Okay, so remember these languages do not have reduced vowels in general. All right, okay. Now in summary we could also say that if you add more syllables to an utterance in a syllable term language that just means it will take longer to say it and that of course you think well, that's obvious. That makes a lot of sense. You add more syllables, therefore the utterance will take longer to say. So I've given you two examples again. The first utterance is still the same as before, five syllables. And then the second one, I've added two more, so that's seven syllables. So the second utterance, of course, it will take longer to say it in a syllable time language. Now that is very different to stress time languages, and we will see this next okay so so far so good it's really easy right you're with me still let's have a look now at um, the other category okay what about stress time languages how do they work what makes them different now in stress timed languages um, we have a very different rule at play and that is that they have um, stressed syllables at regular intervals it sounds a bit technical at the moment. You were like, what does that mean? Intervals makes me think of the theater. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. So you have stressed syllables and regular intervals. Have a look at this little diagram below that I've added here because it basically means that the time between one stressed syllable and the next one is roughly the same. So we've got our sentence here again with the seven syllables and you can see three of those are stressed. The first, the third and the last one. And so the time between the first and the third has to be the same as between the third and the last syllable. Although you can see that there are more syllables in between. Now, isn't that interesting? So that means naturally, if we want to keep the same time, you can see the error at the moment looks a lot longer, but really um, what we want to do is like, have a look at the next diagram down here. We want to keep the same time. So that means those three syllables in between, well, we will have to say them a lot faster so that they become shorter and that we can keep the same timing, okay? So that means that in stress time languages, 
Mm. Syllables do not last the same amount of time. Well, they can't because otherwise we couldn't follow this rule of keeping the same time from one stress to the next. Okay, and so unstressed syllables are shortened so that you can fit to this rhythm. Okay, you can see that the, there's only one syllable between the first and the third stress. And, and so that's quite easy because we can, we can take our time a little bit here, but then the next time we have three syllables and then they have to be said faster and they become shorter. And so uh, we can keep to the timing, okay? And if they have to be said faster and they become shorter, you wonder like, well, well, how do we make them shorter, okay? Well, obviously when we speak faster, we make a, a syllable shorter, there's something that happens, okay? And that is vowel reduction, okay? And so stress time languages usually have vowel reduction because we have to say some words faster and not just words, we syllables, okay, to be precise. And other features also are contractions, elision, that means like the, 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 some sounds are lost, okay, weak forms, longer vowels become shorter. And so all of those things are features of stress time languages. All right, and if you wonder about contractions and elision and weak forms and you don't really know what those are, then have a look at my other videos where I will explain those things to you. In, and you can find those on my channel. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples of stress time languages. So English is a stress time language and that really is the explanation why my students always say, well, why, why, why do some words sound so different individually compared to in a sentence? Well, that is because maybe they are suddenly unstressed and they have to be set faster. And so there's vowel rejection or something else happening and they do in fact sound different. That is quite right. So English is one, German is another one, Russian, Thai, Dutch, Swedish, those are other examples of stress time languages. Right, now, um, let's have a look now at an example so that you can see this in action and I can illustrate this and hopefully it will become even clearer to you. Okay, so let's have a look at this example sentence. So we're going to start with um, a really short sentence it only consists of three words and also three syllables, okay? So we've got boys play games, really short sentence. And it's only three syllables, boys play games. So let's see what happens when we add more syllables and more words to the sentence, okay? And um, first of all, we've got four syllables here and we say the boys play games. So we've added an article here, all right? So boys play games, the boys play games, and then we come to our next sentence and that's the boys will play games. And you can see we've added now two more words, two more syllables, the and will. So we've got five syllables in total, but it's still only three stressed syllables. So we still keep to the same timing, okay? And we have another sentence here, the boys will be playing games, okay? So here we have will be and playing now, okay, ing form obviously because it's the future continuous. So we have seven syllables, so that is four more. And then we're going to go a little bit further and add one more by saying, the boys will be playing the games. And so we add another article. So you can see we have, um, increase the sentence from three syllables to eight syllables. Now, but the timing is the same from sentence number one to the very last sentence. So boys play games will take approximately the same amount of time as saying the boys will be playing the games. And so will be and the games <laughs> have to be said a lot faster so that we can keep to the same timing from one stressed syllable to the next. And I've underlined the stressed syllables for you to make it a bit clearer. Okay, so here's really just to summarize it. You've got the very first sentence again, boys play games and the boys will be playing the games from three syllables to eight syllables. 
but both sentences will last approximately the same amount of time, even though this second sentence has five more syllables. And that is because of the beauty of stress-timed languages. This is how they work. So in English, the sentence will not take longer to say. It looks longer, but it won't take longer to say. Versus if you were to translate the sentence into all these sentences into Spanish, they will take longer. Okay, the second sentence will take longer to say than the first sentence. And that's really the difference, the main difference between syllable-timed and stress-timed languages. All right, so I hope this video has made it a little bit clearer what syllable-timed languages are and stress-timed languages and where the difference is. If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment below. I'll be happy to get back to you and explain a little bit more. And if you have any more questions about pronunciation, please check out my channel. You'll find a lot more videos on there. Okay, bye for now and hopefully I'll see you soon.